We're going according to the saying that fasting has four integrals. A person, that's the sa'im, and then we mentioned conditions for this sa'im. A niyah, the intention, and we mentioned details for the intention. A nahar, naharun qabilun lisawm. A daytime that accepts fasting. And we mentioned details under that. And now we're on the fourth integral, which is an abstention itself. And so the author says, an abstention from the mufattirs. Mufattir means fast invalidators. The mufattirs that will be detailed in their chapter. So what happened here, this sentence, the abstention, it is not an active uh, thing. Rather, it is uh, a refraining. So then, since the abstention is itself a refraining, it's not something that's active, such as reciting some words or doing some moves, then this abstention, to clarify what it is, we would have to actually mention the invalidators of the abstention. So these are like the same thing. These are close, meaning the abstention itself as opposed to what invalidates the fast. So the mufattirs, those are the things that break the fast. If you know what those are, then you'll know what the abstention is. Uh, so then... What happened here is then we're going to talk about, it's like we're going to talk about the abstention itself in another chapter, which is by discussing the invalidators of the fast in that chapter. So we're just about to get there. So right before we get there, here are some things to add to the matter of the abstention. By consensus, it is recommended for this abstention to delay the pre-dawn meal. That means to eat the sahur as late as you can without being afraid of fajr. Which is a sunnah of the prophets, not only Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Its time starts at midnight, as mentioned by al-Rafi'i, and you know what midnight is. That's the middle between Maghrib and fajr. So the time for this, this meal is at midnight. As mentioned by Ar-Rafi'i at the end of the chapter of Iman. It is recommended to be before dawn, a time that it takes to recite 50 verses. Unless that is too close for comfort. So if that's too close for comfort, then before that. And it ends at dawn. So you really want to stop before the dawn comes in, Yani. So that the dawn comes in without you doing any invalidator. That's the abstention. Refraining from the invalidator is the abstention. The minimum of this pre-dawn meal is eating or drinking even a little. As said by an nawawi in the explanation of Al-Muhadhab, like one sip of water or one gulp of water, one bite of something. One should also honor this abstention by leaving out ugly talk. It is already obligatory to refrain from insulting a Muslim. See, Babul Muslimi Fusuq. Insulting a Muslim is a major sin. Or harming him with speech, like verbal abuse. And protecting the tongue from gossip. That's saying something true about the Muslim in his absence that he dislikes for you to say tail-bearing that's going between the Muslims to make trouble between them. And similar to that is making animals fight. Lying, saying different from the truth while knowing the truth, and the like. All of that is already obligatory, but even more emphatically avoided while fasting, so that you don't lose the reward of your fasting. 
It is narrated by the two sheikhs. فَإِذَا أَصْبَحَ أَحَدُكُمْ صَائِمًا If any of you were fasting, فَلَا يَرُفَثْ وَلَا يَجْهَلْ Then do not commit any obscenity or ignorance. فَإِنِ امْرُؤٌ شَاتَمَهُ أَوْ قَاتَلَهُ And if someone insults him or fights him, فَلْيَقُلْ Let him say, إِنِّي صَائِمْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ I am abstaining. I am abstaining. One says it twice or thrice. Because this is more likely to make the transgressor stop. He would either say it with his tongue, like Anawa we said in al afkar with the intention of admonishing the other and deterring him with what is better. Or he would say it in his heart, as copied by Ar-Rafi'i from the Imams, and he did not mention more than that. So now here are the invalidators of the fasting. The mufattirs that are not apostasy, so apostasy is one of them, but those that aren't apostasy are what interrupt the abstention of anyone who chose to engage in them knowingly. He chose means he wasn't forced. He chose to engage in them, had one saliva reached his outer lips, and then he took it back in, and then he swallowed it. He broke his fast if it were an accumulative amount. So that's an example. He chose to engage in them knowingly, knowing that it's haram. Though conscious of the fast, realizing that he's fasting, not forgetting. The mufattirs that are not apostasy are what interrupt the fasting of anyone who chose to engage in them knowingly. But apostasy, you don't have to know that you did it. That's why it's separate. If you committed apostasy, your fast is invalidated. Other invalidators of the fast invalidate the fast for anyone who chose to engage in them knowingly while conscious of the fast. Ignorantly engaging in a mufattir other than apostasy invalidates the fast. Ignorantly engaging in a mufattir other than apostasy invalidates the fast, except for the new Muslim or the like. Because he doesn't know that this invalidates the fast, this new Muslim. Precisely then, fasting is interrupted by apostasy. Absolutely. Self-induced vomiting so you have to refrain from that. That's part of the abstention. Sexual intercourse for a man. Mm. Fast is invalidated by sexual intercourse for a man, but it's invalidated for the woman before the verification of the sexual intercourse. The verification is by the disappearance of the glands into the woman's private part. So that's the verification of it. Her fast will be invalidated before this verification by only part of the glands entering. This will invalidate her fast. So that's why it says sexual intercourse for a man. His fast won't be invalidated uh, like hers would. It wouldn't be invalidated until the verification of that. Ejaculation by contact without a barrier, ejaculation by contact without a barrier. Ejaculation by contact means like by masturbating or by kissing. Without a barrier, that means skin on skin. Menstrual and postpartum bleeding, this will invalidate the fast without her choice. Childbirth and insanity and a coma before dawn until after sunset. So, childbirth, that's clear. If she gave birth, her fast is invalidated. Because of comparing the childbirth to menstruation. 
and the thing they have in common is the obligation of performing a ghusl. It means that the proof that childbirth invalidates the fast is qiyas, legal comparison. What's it being compared to? It's compared to the menstrual and postpartum bleeding. Insanity invalidates the fast. A coma, that means fainting, from before dawn until after sunset. This invalidates the fast. And ev yani, nah, that day doesn't count. And every digestible and indigestible volume intentionally introduced into a metabolizing or non-metabolizing cavity. And every digestible and indigestible volume, digestibles like food, indigestibles like a stone, volume, something that takes up space, including smoke into the lungs, intentionally introduced into a metabolizing or a non-metabolizing cavity. Metabolizing means basically digesting. Metabolizing means incorporating it into the body. Incorporating this foreign substance into the body. So metabolizing or non-metabolizing, like metabolizing is like your stomach. And non-metabolizing like your head, for example. If you put something in your head through your nose or... Uh, through a crack in your skull. You put something into your head. Cavity means opening. So not like injection into the muscle. Someone sent a question today. If I got acupuncture, will it invalidate the fast? So needles into the skin will not invalidate the fast. Even injection into the vein does not invalidate the fast. Because that's not... Uh, a cavity from an inlet. That's not a cavity from an orifice. The vein is not a cavity from an orifice. Through an original or an unoriginal orifice. Original orifice, we'll see, we have them listed. Or unoriginal orifice is like having a hole in your throat. Unoriginal orifice, like getting a, your throat punctured. Or having a hole in your stomach. While conscious of fasting. Yani, realizing that one is fasting, remembering. Except pure unmixed saliva, we have to exclude that. If you swallow it, your fast is not invalidated. Pure means not filthy. If it's nudges, then swallowing it will break your fast, even if the saliva is white. Like, if your mouth bled, your gum bled, and you spit the blood until your saliva became white again. But you never rinsed your mouth out. According to Ashafi'i, your mouth is still impure. Swallowing this saliva before rinsing your mouth will invalidate your fast has to be pure, not filthy, unmixed saliva. Unmixed means nothing in there, like if someone ate some candy and it colored his tongue, colored his mouth, colored his saliva. Swallowing this will break the fast. And swallowing the mucus that drips from the head breaks the fast. If something's dripping down from your head into your throat, if you're able to catch it and you don't, you let it go while you're able to catch it and you let it go down your throat without swallowing it, you let it go down your throat even without doing a swallow. But you were able to catch it and spit it out, this will invalidate your fast. That's Shafiri school. If it went down your throat because you couldn't stop it, then this will not invalidate your fast. 
And if you cough up some phlegm from your chest, then you can't swallow it back down. That will invalidate your fast. Also, if you vomit, not on purpose, you can't swallow it back down. Or it will invalidate your fast. Only pure, unmixed saliva can you swallow. So let's run through those again really quick here. The mufattirs, fast invalidators that are not apostasy, are what interrupt the abstention, the fasting, of anyone who chose to engage in them knowingly, wasn't forced, and he didn't forget he was fasting. He was conscious of the fast. Ignorantly engaging in a mufattir other than apostasy invalidates the fast except for the new Muslim or the like. So precisely, fasting is fasting is interrupted by apostasy. Absolutely, meaning whether you knew or you didn't know, or you intended or you didn't intend. Self-induced vomiting, so not if you vomited uncontrollably that means it just came up out of your stomach without your inducing it sexual intercourse for a man we explained that that's clear ejaculation by contact without a barrier we explained that menstrual and postpartum bleeding that's clear childbirth insanity coma meaning fainting from before dawn until after sunset. So that means if he caught any part of the daytime conscious, his fast is valid. That's why it says from before dawn until after sunset. So that it unambiguously means that he didn't get any part of the daytime fasting consciously. And every digestible and indigestible volume, something that fills space, intentionally introduced, put into, introduced into, put into, a metabolizing or non-metabolizing cavity. Cavity means opening. So that's in your head, your lungs, your stomach, your bladder, your intestines. Through an original or unoriginal orifice, we explained unoriginal, we're going to read about original now. While conscious of fasting, not forgetting, except pure unmixed saliva. Original orifices are the mouth, the cavity from there starts from below the exit of the letter ha. So the cavity starts from your neck, inside your neck. From the letter ha in the middle of your throat. The nose, from there the cavity starts after the bridge. So the bridge is the bone of your nose that attaches right to your face. So basically you if you put your finger right at the edge of there, it's at your eye. So if something gets past there, into your head, this invalidates your fast. It got into a cavity from an orifice, an original orifice. Therefore, snorting mucus from the nose through the head to spit it from the mouth invalidates. So what do you do here? You blow your nose only. Don't snort it from your nose into your head and then transport it to your mouth so that you can spit it out. This will invalidate your fast. That's Shafi'i school. The front and back privates, which lead to the bladder and intestines. Therefore, enema and colonoscopy invalidate the fast. You can look those up if you don't know what those are. According to what is most correct, had a man stuffed cotton into his penis, his fast is invalidated. Also, the woman's fast is broken by only part of the gland's penis entering her vagina. That's what we mentioned already. And according to some, the ears, 
and definitely not the eyes. The eyes are definitely not orifices into the head. Nor the pores. The pores are definitely not orifice. So if you put lotion or anything else on your skin, it's not going to invalidate your fast. The cavity, according to this saying, that the ears are an orifice, then the cavity starts after the canal. According to that, if he dripped a drop into his ear or inserted the likes of a kohol stick into his ear, his fast is broken if it goes beyond the ear canal. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.